welcome or oh, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. What I do know is that if editing me has remembered, you're going to be watching me in black and white right now. Do I look like a 50s film star? Do I? I well, probably don't wear these tattoos. Um, <clears throat> so you will know, if you haven't already read the thumbnail and the film description, that it is a continuation of my photo inspiration collab series. And I am super, super delighted that one of the beautiful ladies who has already collabed with me loved this series so much. She's chosen a photo for us to do this time. So this look is from a photo chosen by the ever wonderful Stars Hollywood Jessica. So, if you want to find out exactly which photo Jessica chose and you want to see what colours I've used today, my friend, as always, you are in exactly the right place. Here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay. I will no doubt have told you in the intro um, that this is another in my series of my photo inspiration collabs and I'm really delighted that one of my previous collabies, I'm not quite sure that's the right term but no, nah, it'll work for now, um, searched a photo out that she liked and said, could we do another one? Now you know me. I love doing collabs, I think it's great, it's especially great when someone you've collabed with loves your series idea so much that they then search out a photo and go, ah, uh, can we do this one next? So I was over the moon, of course I said yes, and if I slide this way slightly, there is the picture. Now, I currently have it uh, on my phone. So as you can see, it's kind of a, a Halloween-y vibe, which if you know me, you know that I love Halloween. So we've got sort of like the dark blue and purple in the sky. We've got um, going through to the brighter blues, a little bit of sort of like turquoisey green in the, in the clouds there. And then you've got the gorgeous orange and yellows. and oof. So, yeah, I'm going to have fun with this one. So, I thought I'd give my Certify Affinity palette another run out because purples, hello, oranges, hello, yellows, hello, fantastic. Um, I'm also going to give my Snow Angels palette a run out because dark blue, light blue, fantastic. And I thought, as I've only used her very, very infrequently, I get my Jelly Much shadow from Colourpop in shade Short Circuit, which is that gorgeous coppery orange, which I thought would go nicely. Because obviously those are all mattes. So I thought that would just go nicely. Perhaps as a pop of a pop of shine somewhere. I haven't decided how I'm going to use it yet. I might not use it, but it's there if I want to. So... Shall we get zoomed in? Hmm. Um, my channel, as you know, is aimed at all skill levels from beginners to experts, which is why I zoom you right in. I talk you through every stage. Uh, if I'm too slow for you as an expert, then feel free to speed me up. Um, I don't blend as fast as a lot of people because my chronic pain prevents me from blending as fast as a lot of people. So I really won't be offended if you speed me up. You may lose a bit of the AS <laughs> You may lose a bit of the ASMR let me just take tablets, I've already taken them. You, you may lose a bit of the ASMR voice, but you know. Hmm. Uh, my face has been washed 
moisturised, SPF'd and primed. I've got my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot there we go, on my lids, which I have not set. So I've got a bit of a, a, bit of a tackier base. Although, to be honest, the paint pot dries down. It doesn't feel tacky when you're putting it on, but it does grab shadow better when you don't um, set it. That's the word I was groping for. Uh, right, who did I discussion? Again, if you've heard this a million times, feel free to skip forward until you see the first piece of colour going on. <laughs> right. Don't you just love an eye boogie? Thankfully with these nails, they're really easy to get rid of. Hey, hey. Uh, Right, as I look straight forward with my eye open, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have a hooded lid. If you can't see all of your lid, then you have either a half or a full hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorials. Okay? Now, I've actually got deep set eyes, and a lot of people with deep set eyes think they have hooded lids, because we do encounter a lot of the same problems that people with hooded lids have. So if I cover my mobile lid this side with this and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much mobile lid again that folds and tucks back in because I've got deep set eyes. So I do experience the same issues with when, you, when you're cutting your crease, you can't just do a nice pretty shape along your eyeball. You have to kind of come right up here with it get transfer of shimmers, glitters, even with a glitter glue will break down through the crease where your eye is rubbing against itself. So I do understand the issues. Now, if you have got hooded lids, the way to follow my tutorial or anybody's tutorials is to get something like this or a pencil brush and with your eye open just sketch out where you want your crease to fall. So imagine you can't see any of my hooded lid, any of my uh, mobile lid. I would then come up to about here and mark so that I was creating the effect of a hooded lid now of, uh, of a mobile lid. Now obviously that is going to reduce the amount of space between your crease and your brow. So all you need to do is use slightly smaller brushes. If I'm using a super big fluffy brush, you use a more tapered fluffy brush. If I'm using a more tapered fluffy, fluffy brush, you need to use something like this that comes up to a point. This is a, a tapered blending brush. Okay, So there's no reason you can't follow my tutorial. Right, I'm going to start putting colour on my face. Well, on my eyelids anyway. Um, I think I might start with the dark blue because um, when you've got a non-set lid it's usually best to start with the deeper colours and blend out to the light rather than the other way around, light to deep. So, I'm going to start off with Snow Angels and I'm going to go in with Thin Ice which is the deep blue on the end. And I'm using the animal or animal brushes that I um, recommend in my the AliExpress brushes that I recommend basically. And this is eye crease brush number eight, and you can see how much that's picked up. So I'm just going to tap off into my colour switch so that I don't get too much fallout. And I'm going to start. I'm going to start off just popping this on the outer corner of my eye here on my mobile lid. And just tap to blend because we, no, we don't want to start swirling yet because we haven't got a set base. We're setting our base effectively with this, this particular colour. So I'm just going to tap this along through what for me is my natural crease. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to talk to you about Jessica. Now, Jessica is a Swedish, you'll know all of this if you've watched my previous collab, but Jessica is a Swedish YouTuber. Um, I actually watch an awful lot of Swedish YouTubers. It, oh, that's the front door, hold on. Right, I'm back. Okay. Um, yeah, I actually watch quite a few Swedish YouTubers. Um, the first person I discovered was Angelica. Um, I think I discovered her. I was looking for a 
tutorial for a specific palette I was interested in buying. Um, and it was quite a colourful palette, so there weren't that many. Oh, hang on, I need, to, I need to wiggle. Hang on, my back's killing me. Oh. Ah, let's try that again, shall we? Um, yeah, there was a specific um, palette I was looking at that I was interested in getting. But I've not seen many reviews on it because it was a very, very colourful palette. So most YouTubers weren't really touching it. Um, but Angelica did. And that's how I discovered her. Right, as you can see, I've tapped this all the way across. I've picked a little bit more pigment up when I got to here. Continue tapping across. And now what I'm going to do is really gently do some little tiny circular movements just to soften it and blend it in amongst itself to make sure I haven't got any patchiness. But I'm not going up the eye at all, I'm literally just blending across what I've put down. And then I'll go and repeat this on the other eye. Just so you know what's happening. Yeah, see, what you, if, what you need to do is when you relax your brows back down again, just make sure you can still see a little bit of that blue, because that's what we want. Okay, uh, I'm going to now do this on the other eye and continue to talk to you. So, yeah, that's how I found Angelica. Through Angelica, I found Paulina. Um, through Paulina, I found Marlene. Um, I found Jessica complete. No, I, no, I found Marlene through Jessica, I think. Um... I found Jessica completely by accident. I was, I just uploaded my, all of my palettes film. And with YouTube, if, if you don't actually have a channel and don't upload yourself, you probably won't realise this, but when you upload a film, um, whatever tags you've put on it for like the specific palette or whatever the film is about, you'll then find that YouTube will start suggesting, as well as channels that you are subscribed to, they will start suggesting other channels with similar tags to what you've just put down. Now this eye I've got very, very deep creasing, as you can see, so I do have to stretch the eye out slightly. It's because this eye got pulled around when I was like five, six years old at the ophthalmic hospital. So, um, don't do this to your eye if you don't have to, okay? Yeah, so I was I not long put up my this is all my palettes film. Um and it, it brought Jessica's up and it said I have fourteen hundred palettes and I'm like that's gotta be a mistype surely and I started watching it and it's not a mistype. Jessica at the time she's probably got way more now, but at the time had 1,400 different eyeshadow palettes. So, um, the first film I watched, you didn't see Jessica, you just saw her hands in the, in the drawers. And her voice just intrigued me. She's got a lovely accent. Um, and I was also intrigued by the fact that here's someone who also appears to love colour from the type of... Um, palettes that they've got. So I thought, mm, maybe, it's, maybe it's something about the Swedes that like colour. Because Paulina likes colour and Angelica likes colour and now I've found this Jessica who likes colour. So I watched a few of her tutorials and I'm like, oh, this girl knows what she's doing. Um, and as I watched more, I discovered that although she works in the finance industry, she has actually got a background as a makeup artist. So she knows what she's talking about. Um, and she produces some amazing looks. She really does. I've just cleaned the majority of this colour off on my um, clean washcloth here. Just to show you, there is no more blue coming off of the brush. Because I'm about to go in with one of the purples. And I think... Uh, I think probably the closest one is going to be either Sana or Farah. Let's have a look at it on camera. 
camera. I think I'm going to go in with this one, which is Farrah. Um, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again, just load the brush up, tap off and then tap on, just slightly overlapping the blue that I've already put down to build the colour up. Right, so yeah, so I started watching a couple of um, Jessica's other films and absolutely loved her style and her personality and Gunvald, her dog, who makes regular appearances, bless him. Um, so I subscribed to her. Through her I found Marlin. And then I can't remember if it was Jessica or if it was Marlin that I found Linda. Um, Linda Wallinda through. But um, she was another one of the ladies that I collabed with. So, so far I've collabed with two of the, uh, the Swedish channels that I follow. Um, Linda was very, very small when I first started watching her. I think she had like seven subscribers when I first started um, following her. Uh, but I just, she's got an amazingly restful voice, which I love listening to. And she also, again, likes colourful looks. Uh, so again, I was really intrigued, watched a couple of videos, liked it, so I subscribed. Right, I'm going to do the same thing now, I've patted the colour on, I'm just going to do a little bit of, a little bit of blending, just to blend those together better. So there's a slightly less harsh line where the two meet. I might pick up a bit more purple while I'm doing the blending so I don't blend that purple away. So, yeah, that was how I discovered everybody. Um, and as I said, I love watching Jessica's films. I really do. Um, to be honest, I think I prefer hers to Paulina and Angelica now. She just... I don't know, I think probably because she doesn't get any PR. So everything she owns, she's bought herself. Whereas obviously, you know, Angelica and Paulina do get, I know Angelica gets PR, but I don't know about Paulina actually, I know she got, she got some from Blush Tribe because obviously she collabed with them on her, on her um, palette, which I bought, which is lovely. But I think part of the reason that I like watching Jessica so much is because she doesn't have PR. So you know that she's bought every single item of makeup herself. And you know you're getting a really, really blunt, honest review, which is awesome. Because, you know, that's, that's what you get with me, basically. Um, okay, I like that. I'm now going to do exactly the same thing to the other eye. So yeah, that was that was how I discovered Jessica, um, and I approached her initially saying, um, "Would love to collab with you. You know, do let me know. A if you want to, and B if you have time, sort of thing." Because I had this collab series in mind. Um, I'm not overly worried about this fallout because I haven't done my face makeup yet, so just brushes away. It's because I didn't tap my brush off, so it's my own fault. Um, yeah, I approached Jessica and said, you know, would she like to collab? And she came back and said, yes, I'd love to. I can't do it for a couple of months, but yes, I'd love to. I'm like, no, that's absolutely fine. Um, and she came back and said, right, OK, I now have time. What, what collab idea do you have in mind? And I told her about this series. And she's like, oh, yeah, I love this. I think the first one had just gone up. My first collab with Nikki. Nikki Raven, who's Dutch, she also has a lovely voice, um, and I said to Jessica, I've, you know, this, this one's just gone up with myself and Nikki, this is the sort of series I was wanting to start for my channel, does this interest you, if not we can think of something else to do, you know, 
I knew whatever palettes I've got, she's probably got the same. We could do a palette bingo or choose colours for each other or whatever. Um, and she's like, no, 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 I absolutely love that. She goes, I'll go and watch the film and I'll let you know. And she sort of watched it and she came back and she went, that is such a cool idea. Yes, I absolutely want to do it. What picture did you have in mind? And I said, and as I've, I've, I've given, whenever I'm collabing um, on this series, I've always said, do you have a picture that you want to use or are you happy for me to send over one that I've got? Because I've every time I see a picture I like that I think, oh, I could use that in the series, I just screenshot it and stick it in a folder in my phone. Um, and she's like, no, 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 it's your series, you choose. I'm like, right, okay, fair enough. So I sent across the first picture. Um, and she went, oh, gosh, that's beautiful. Yes, I can't wait. So we did our, our respective looks with that uh, and put that up. And... Um, she actually messaged me and said, that was so much fun, can we do it again? I'm like, absolutely, if you want to collab again, I don't have any problems with that at all. I'd love to. And she's like, awesome, I will find a picture this time. I'm like, yay, fantastic. Um, so it, it's it's really, it's nice validation for me that this is actually something that people, because obviously it's something that I like doing, taking inspiration from colours in a photo. But, you know, just because I enjoy it doesn't mean that everybody's going to agree with me. So it's really nice validation when you get someone say, that was so much fun, can I choose a picture next time? Because it's just, it's really nice. I like it. Okie dokie. I think I'm going to go back over onto Snow Angels now and pick up the blue for the top. So I'm just clearing the purple off of this brush. It's a bit dramatic for a Monday morning, admittedly, but do you know what? All we've got to do today is go and do the food shopping, so, you know. Never know who you're going to bump into when you're food shopping, do you? <coughs> right, back into Snow Angels, and I'm going to go in with uh, this blue here, which is zero degrees. I'm still using the exact same brush and I'm going to do exactly the same thing because don't forget this bit up here still isn't set. So again I'm picking up look at that blue, tapping off and then overlapping with the purple and just tapping that blue into place. Yeah, so it's, it was awesome. Um, and when Jessica sent me the photo through, she's like, I hope you don't mind that it's Halloween. And I'm like, no, love, I, I absolutely adore Halloween, so I'm really quite happy about that. Now, I do struggle just on these top corners here because I do have really deep creasing just starting here. You can probably see better here where I've not got the shadow on it. So I do struggle a bit getting any pigments to lay down there. As you can see this is laying down much better when I come across here. But um, the trick is just to keep tapping and keep adding it on and just persevere with it really. It, it's a bit frustrating. You kind of have to tap on, blend till it disappears, tap on, blend till it disappears and eventually it just it builds up. So. But I'm just going to carry this along. Now, as you know, I normally do leave a gap just below my brows. I'm just going to really gently... I'm holding these brushes right at the very end so I put as little pressure on as possible. I'm just really gently buffing with this blue. It's not quite as bright a blue as the blue in the picture, but... I kind of wanted this to be a really dark, smokyish eye. Probably could have done the blue before the purple, actually. But what's done is done. I actually quite like this. I do like this. It's going to be fun adding the pops of colour, isn't it? The oranges and the yellows and. I love playing with colour. I really do. I've always loved playing with colours. Even as a kid, I'd... This is probably going to be something that only 
UK viewers of a certain age will remember. But we used to go to play school before you went to your first infant school. And we had these colouring books. <coughs> and they were the Stomper books. And Stomper was a horse. And I don't think I ever coloured Stomper in in horse colours once. Not once. There were a series of these Stomper books with sort of more and more intricate designs to colour in as you worked through the series. So like you start off with really simple stuff because obviously colouring in inside the lines is a you know it's a hand-eye coordination thing isn't it that um, you start teaching kids and as their motor skills get better their fine motor skills get better you can make the drawings a little bit more complicated and make the areas they're colouring in that little bit smaller but Stomper was always on the cover <clears throat> and I don't think I ever coloured Stomper in horse colours not once it was green and it was blue and it was pink with orange spots and so yeah I've always had a bit of a thing about um, being a bit unusual and loving colour um, I think had I been born sort of a decade younger than I you know, if I'd been born in the 80s rather than in the 70s, I think I probably, <clears throat> during the 90s, would have had much waftier hair than I did. But unfortunately by then I was working, so I, um, I had to have normal hair colours. But I think had I still been, you know, at college, I think I'd have, I'd have had the blue and the pink and the orange hair. But... Um, I'm just going to wait till I go grey and then I'm going to be the funkiest old lady at the bus stop. You know, I'm going to I'm going to have like the, the the hot pink hair and the neon green you know, fringe. I just love playing with colour. Hmm, I like that. I like that a lot. <clears throat> Sorry, I've still got this really, really clunky throat. I think it's my hay fever starting, to be honest. Which is great, because we're not even finished through March yet, and hay fever's kicking in already. But even worse once hubby cuts the lawn later. Right. I'm now going to grab one of my... If you've ever seen me cut my crease, you will have seen these brushes. These are the nail art acrylic brushes because they come down super, super thin at the side, as you can see. This is not the one I usually use, which is why it's a little bit wider. Where's the one I normally use? Where's my number 12? Hello, there we go. The number 12, which as you can see, comes down to a very fine point now. Now, how to cut your crease if you have hooded or deep eyes. So, I am going to grab my Revolution Conceal and Define in a C0.5. Grab some of this on the brush and initially, quite roughly, just chuck it on the lid and then open my eyes and blink, and you can see it continue, it sort of where it smudges up onto the upper lid it shows you exactly where you need to cut your lid to I mean you can do this if you've not got hooded eyes as well or deep set eyes 
It's just a really easy way of working out exactly where or exactly how high you need to go when you're cutting your crease. And I'm patting this on so we get a nice even coverage. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it off to the side that hasn't got any concealer on it. And just gently pat that over the same area. And what it will do is pick up excess for you. Now, because I want this to be as sticky as possible, I'm going to do one eye at a time. <clears throat> so I'm just going to clean the concealer off of the brush just so the brush doesn't start to stiffen up or anything. And then I'm going to grab this is another AliExpress set that I bought. I've, do I've not got it linked unfortunately because it arrived after I'd done my brush sets but it's just you know it's basically the same as the Jeffrey ones except it's green on the end and it's not natural fibres it's synthetic fibres so it's just easy to work with so I'm going back into my affinity palette and I'm going to start off with that beautiful lemon yellow called Salma I'm just going to press this into the sticky concealer. You need a little bit of patience when you're doing this. Especially when you're using mattes and not shimmers. But you do get such a lovely effect. I love doing an all matte look. I really do. It can be surprisingly impactful. Okay, so I'm just going to clean yellow off of the brush and I'm going to go in with let me have another look at my picture how much how deep does that orange go yeah, it does go quite deep actually okay so then I'm going to go in with Sonia which is a lovely true bright orange as you can see so I'm going to pop this next to Salma. It's a real neon orange this one, I love it. And just do, I know it looks very stripy at the moment, I will sort this out, don't panic. I'm just laying colours down at the moment. Right, I'm going to clean off the brush. Go back into Salma, pick up a little bit of the yellow and just drag the yellow onto the orange and then drag the orange back across onto the yellow and just really gently buff between the two to soften the edge there ever so slightly. Not entirely sure that worked, but I like it anyway. And then I'm gonna go in with Shireen, which is like a, um, a burnt orange, like a pumpkin orange. Looks really bright on here actually, but 
<clears throat> you can see in here it does actually go quite a bit deeper. I think you can see there, look, it's got, it's coming up more red on my viewfinder. And then again, gently buff over the edges. <clears throat> so sorry about my voice today. Just gonna pick up a little bit of that Sonia. Orange and just see if I can blend it into the yellow a little bit more effectively. I might need to use a slightly fluffier brush. So let me grab this is just a generic flat packer brush. Just gonna pick a little bit of that up and gently buff over. Yeah, I think that's better at just needed a slightly softer brush to blend those two edges together. I like that. I like that. the other eyelid. <clears throat> so we just do exactly the same thing. Load the flat packer brush up with the concealer, plop it very randomly, but reasonably thick on the lid. Open your eye and blink a few times, and there it gives you your line that you actually need to follow. Now with this eye, because I have such deep creasing, I do actually have to stretch my eye out, otherwise I end up with... Um, it's sort of like skimming over the top of the creases and then throughout the day as it dries every time I sort of move my eyes or blink I end up with a shower of powder coming down my face it's worse with shimmers but it does exactly the same with mattes to be honest but as I said if you don't have super deep creasing then do it the way I did this side. And it is it's so easy that doing it this way. I discovered it totally by accident because I'd I'd gone across my natural eyelid and then my phone rang. And it, was, it wasn't when I was filming, thankfully. So I picked the phone up and answered it, and of course, I'd been blink, you know, I'd opened my eye and blinked, so. And I went, oh god, it's gone right up and spoiled my. Oh no, hang on a minute. And uh, I've pretty much done that ever since. Right, and then turn it over to the side that hasn't got any on. And just pat over the whole area to pick up any excess product. Because if you've got too much concealer on there, if you've got too much concealer on there, it will actually mix with the powders that you're putting on your lid. And then you're going to end up in a right mucking fuddle. As my granddad would have said. So 
So, clean the uh, brush off and put this little plastic protective lid back on to help keep its shape. And it's time to add the colours. Right, that was rather too dramatic, wasn't it, really? <coughs> so, again, I'm going to go in with the small brush first. Because it does just give you that little bit more control, especially in the inner corner here, to make sure that you are actually getting a nice, accurate placement of the shadows. like so. Clean the yellow off and then I'm going to go back into Sonia which is that beautiful neon orange. off and go into Shireen really does look red on my viewfinder but I promise you it is actually a burnt orange when this film goes up I'll um, I'll put photos up but obviously I can't do it beforehand otherwise it gives away the result doesn't it So there's my stripes, clean my brush off, pop it back over there, grab my slightly fluffier brush, grab some Selma on one side and Sonia on the other, and drag some Selma into the Sonia and the Sonia into the Selma, and then gently buff the two colours together just to soften the edge slightly and then the same Sonia one side Shireen the other and pull Shireen across into Sonia and Sonia Cross into Shireen. The sun's come out because I'm in a south facing kitchen and it's morning. And uh, it's just made my viewfinder go super, super bright. So I hope it's not affecting my white balance too much. <coughs> right, to clean that brush off. Now, I'm going to go off camera and do my um, face makeup. I'm just going to show you how I tidy up the edges. This has just got a bit of micellar water on it. And I just literally do that. So I just pull it up in a straight line. And that gives you that nice sharp edging without having to muck about with putting tape on your face. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So, I am going to go off camera and put my foundation and whatnot on and I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you. So, please don't go anywhere. Hey, I'm back. Okay, decided I'm going to do a little bit of a change of plan because I do want to add some bright blue to this so 
we're going to do some negative space cutting. Sounds complicated? Really isn't. I did this for my St. Patrick's Day look. And on one of my collabs I did this as well. So this is the brush that I'm going to be using. You can see it's super, super fine. And we're going to grab our conceal and define again. And this time, I'm going to attempt, I say attempt because I've only ever done this once before, I'm going to attempt cutting out a wing. What I might do is grab a little mirror so I can sit back and then still be in screen for you. I might put music over this because I really need to concentrate. the wing cut out and I'm going to attempt I've got um I might try I might try this flat brush initially but I may have to go back to that little one which will take forever I'm going into the dream with a vision palette from makeup obsession and I'm going to pick up this colour here, Visualise. 
which is a <clears throat> like a satin. So I'm picking that up on there. And then as we did with the previous colours, I'm just going to press it onto the wet concealer. I don't think that brush is going to work. I'm going to try with the same little brush that I used to cut the wing with. I might actually have to wet it. So let's coat the brush and then give it a bit of a squirt. <clears throat> As always I wipe the ferrule off just to make sure that you don't get any glue loosenage. No, that's not going on bright enough. Okay. New plan. Bear with. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back. Okay, so. I picked up my Jeffree Star liquid lipstick in Jewel Breaker. And you're probably going to have music again because I'm now going to use this and this to redo that wing. Yeah, that's the sort of colour payoff that I want. Why didn't I just do this in the first place? <laughs> enough to look the same this side if I don't put concealer down first. Looks like it might be. Only took a few readjustments. I think it is slightly brighter on this side where it's got the white underneath it. But do you know what? It's close enough that I'm happy. I'm just cleaning this brush off at the moment while I'm talking to you. Now, Jeffree Star liquid lipsticks are eye safe. Not every brand of liquid lipstick is eye safe so you have to make sure that the one you are using is safe to use on your eyes if you're going to do that um, the only ones of Jeffrey's that he says are not eye safe are ones that have got pink or red in them and that's only because they can stain not because they're actually going to damage your eyes or the skin around your eyes. <laughs> Suddenly realised I'd just completely disappeared then. Um, but simply because they can stain. Right. 
time to do the under eyes. So I'll grab that flat brush that I tried initially. <laughs> and I'm going to pick up some henna, which is the bluey purple in this one. I'm just going to run that. Tie it up under the lash line. On both sides. Taking care not to smudge into the wing that we've done. I say that like you're going to be mad enough to do a look like this. I mean, I am, and I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Morrison's looking like this. So, which is probably your equivalent of. I don't know, Walmart maybe? If you could see the face that I'm pulling right now. I always flinch that side because obviously being blind I don't have any peripheral vision. Right, now I've got another flat top brush that's just a bit thicker. And I'm going to go into the Farrah, which is the... Um, purple that we used up here in between yeah you can just see it there look, that one and I'm going to use that just to smudge and buff out this lower lash line just so that it still has its moment because obviously it is rather subdued in amongst the the deep blue and the, uh, the lighter blue. Hmm. I like that. And I'm going to try something that I normally do. I'm going to put some colour into my waterline, which normally ends up coming off in no time at all because my eyes are so watery. But I am going to use the ColourPop Jelly Much Shadow in Short Circuit, which looks like this. I'm going to use this teeny tiny little brush again just to pick some up and again this might not work it's a bit of an experiment and I'm just going to pop this on the waterline to give a bit of oomph feel my eyes wanting to run already. I have very sensitive eyes, they don't like anything being in the waterline at all. But I'm hoping, with this being like a creamy jelly type shadow, I'm hoping it will last better than just pencil in the waterline wood. There. Put its keep me lid back on. Well I got it out, I wanted to use it. And again, clean the little brush off. I always, always clean my brushes off every time I use them, either on a pad with micellar water, if I've used creams, or on the um, clean washcloth, if it's a powder, simply because it makes it a damn sight easy when you do your deep clean. 
um, and it also means if I want to use this again tomorrow I can do without the worry of it um, having smudged or using a different you know having a different colour affecting whatever I'm going to put down and I'm pretty sure I dropped the plastic lid of this on the floor so I'm just going to put that there for a minute right this is my tiny wee brush that I got from um, I got it off of eBay years ago and this is Jeffrey's Deep Freeze Skin Frost it is one of the ones that suffers from hard pan Unfortunately, it's one of his older formulas. I'm just going to pick up some of this and pop that on the inner corner. Just bring it down to meet those purples on the bottom lash line. Yes, I have worn this out as a highlighter, but I've, I mix it with ice cold, so it's not quite so, um, you know, Aladdin's genie or Hades. <coughs> For Nikki Tutorials glazed donut for the white bits in the picture. I'm just going to pop that just up under my tail of my brow. And this will be the highlight that I'm using for the rest of my face as well. Right. I'm going to pause you while I do my mascara and put the rest of my can see a uh, highlighter on and decide what lippy I'm going to wear with this and I will be right back. I'm back. I decided on using my Revolution lipstick in shade Prime which is um, one of my new purchases. It's um, a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk lipstick. So, there we go. There is today's, the hair's just gone nuts again. <clears throat> but there is today's photo inspiration look. How do you think I did? Would you have done it like this, or would you have done it differently? If you've got Insta, <clears throat> and you want to try this look, oh, for goodness sake, <clears throat> try that again. If you've got Insta, and you want to try out a look using that particular photo as inspiration, I would love to see it. Please tag me if you do. Um, or if you don't, just have a comment in the description, in the comments box below and let me know how you would have done this look. I really would be interested to find out. And of course, now you've watched mine, you need to go and watch Jessica's because uh, you can uh, bet your sweet bippy, whatever that is, uh, that she would have done a much better job of it than I will because she, her skills are far superior to mine. However, I'm really happy with what I've produced. And yes, I am going to go food shopping with this eye look. Goodness only knows what sort of looks and stares and comments I'm going to get. But, I'm definitely going out in this. So, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, if you can do all the usual, you know, like, comment, share, subscribe. When you subscribe, ring the bell. When you ring the bell, make sure you choose all notifications. Double check you're still subscribed because YouTube does keep unsubscribing people. Uh, don't forget to go and watch Jessica's look. And once you've watched her look, 
and my look and you've checked out the other films on my channel my girlies from the beauty youtuber growth group are as always listed in the description box below and I'd be delighted to have you pop over to them and check out some of their films right all that remains for me to say as ever is your stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Enjoy Jessica's film.